Hi everyone, this is Ryan from Masuva here. Today I wanted to talk about a block we've been developing for Concrete 5 version 5.7. This is a block that we had built for 5.6 and we used it a fair bit and we thought this would be a good one to move across to 5.7. But in doing so we also investigated some of the new um, features available when building blocks and this is what I'm going to also talk about today. So the, the block we've got is a table block and the idea is that you can paste in or type in some tabular data and it manages the output of that in a very clean way and we found this was much better for handling consistently putting in table data about products or, or, or similar as opposed to using the content editors where although they can handle um, tables they often don't look right or they carry across formatting or they're just quite clunky to use so I'll give a demo of this right now here we are with 5.7 in the back end and I'm going to install this package and if I go to the front end and this is just for a, a default install if I now install um, if I now add a new block the table block I can add this to the page but what we've done differently as opposed to what we could do in 5.6 is instead of popping up a dialog and a, a modal window over the top we can take advantage of the same feature that the Red Actor content editors is using which is this inline, inline editing on the page itself. So I've actually got the editing controls directly directly on the page and it behaves the same way as the as the Red Actor plugin. So here I can um, start typing in some tabular data. I'm going to add some headings and just some just some content here just so you can see. What it's doing is, is the the JavaScript table editor which is called hands on table um, this is automatically expanding and um, you know accommodating the new content so um, it's very clean and there's no mucking around with table widths or anything like that so if I save this table we get a very clean um, theme matching table layout we went on and expanded this a bit further and we can do things on this like um, we can merge themselves we can also align things, Oops, I'll do that again, align things, we can um, highlight a column and align that to the right um, and now we're actually starting to be more like a, a spreadsheet than we are a um, you know an HTML editor. We can also, and I'll, I'll give a quick demo, we can also cut and paste some content from a spreadsheet which is the main reason of building this. So if I copy this in and I edit this block here I could go here and paste that content in. I might get rid of my um, uh, my content there. So there's my there's my content straight from a spreadsheet, and it's nice and clean, and um, it's fantastic if you're wanting to take some data sheets from spreadsheets and directly import them without the nonsense of all the extra information, the, the styling and everything to uh, to be applied. So I'll remove this column here. I might just unmerge that, merge that again. So now we've got a really nice, clean, uh, and also semantic table um, that it's outputting. I've also done a couple of um, custom templates. So if we change this one over, I've got one where the first row of the grid is actually also treated as a header. So if you've got something like this data here where you might have um, uh, you know, a specification table. Often that that first column is also a um, a heading. I'll merge these as well, just to sort of show. That's probably in this one here. That's probably you know the kind of thing that you do with it. The other the other uh, template we've got is just a simple one where we're going to turn off the headers altogether. So it's just if you had some sort of grid or it might be, who knows, this is just to remove that top top level one. Um, so yeah, so that's, um, that's that block. So what I'll do now is I'll flick over to the code side of things. And the first thing I'll talk about is that inline editing. With blocks in 5.7, there really is just a flag that you can um, turn on and there's the inline supports inline edit and supports inline add and if those things are flicked to, tr to true it's it behaves without that modal window window and it'll 
try and edit it on the page. There are a couple of things that you sort of have to keep in mind that um, if you do do this, you don't have an, a cancel and an add button or a save button on your block anymore. So you have to provide those yourself. So on the um, on the actual um, um, on the actual block itself, I'll just try and find it. Um, I've got to edit. There it is. There. You can see I've add, added in some buttons, but I'm using the same styling that uh, the red actor um, block, the um, the content block is using. So it's going to match and look the same. It's also going to behave the same. And uh, the other thing that we um, we did with this block was that we looked at asset registration, and this is something that. Um, has been talked a fair bit about but it's kind of a little bit tricky to get your head around initially and, and we use this block as an example um, so we knew what was going on. So the hands-on table editor which is used to run that the actual table builder I've put the CSS and JavaScript for that in a CSS and JS folder within uh, within the package and then what I do on the package controller as when this is um, initialize so when this is on the on start function of the package I'm registering the JavaScript CSS um, files and saying um, we're going to give them an, a handle say where they are what version they are and a few other things about not minifying them because they're already minified that sort of stuff and then I end up registering a group called hands on table where I pull in those two resources from there, when I come to my block itself and I come to the controller of the block, for the add and edit and the composer views, all I need to do is just say require asset and then the handle of that um, there. So once I've got that in place, I don't have to worry about for the individual views about pulling in those JavaScript files. Um, as long as I've registered them as an asset, and I've got them called here as a require asset. Concrete Five is now pulling those things in and uh, handling it for me. So yeah, so I think that's um, that's pretty much a summary of the block. I'll put this on GitHub um, to be used. I may or may not put it on the marketplace. I'm not quite sure yet. Um, maybe it's just as a final example. Let me edit or add a uh, a content block, and we'll show the difference in in managing a table. So. If I've got my tabular data here and I copy that and I paste that in, yes it worked, um, but um, at the moment we don't really have huge number of, um, of table editing controls, but also if this had um, formatting or other things on it or if I wanted to get rid of, um, if I wanted to suddenly add a new column on, um, it's getting a little bit, bit harder because of the merging um, and at the end of the day it's getting mixed up with all my other content in my content block as opposed to it being a discrete little block that I can move around and do what I need. So when I save this, this also doesn't have the classes on it that I need to match the theme. This one has a class of table and table outlined, um, table boarded I think it is, that matches the bootstrap part of this theme whereas here I'd actually have to go in manually edit this, uh, put in class of table, table boarded, save it. Now straight away I'm still, I've still got problems so although it is possible to use this the Red Actor editor for tables, I think the whole beauty of Concrete 5 with the block mechanism is that we can create blocks that solve very particular problems in the whole um, content domain. So in this case, we're saying let's build a block that purely handles tables. It does it well, and we don't have to think about the technicality of it. We just give it its, the, give it the data that we've got, and it takes care of, of that. For example, if we wanted to down the track um, add an extra class or some different styling on this block, we could do a block override, and we could tweak tweak that block and add some extra classes. And across our entire site all of our tables will be updated whereas if we do something like this on individual content blocks um, we'll have to go through every content piece of content and change those classes 
and if we've got hundreds of pages with hundreds of these blocks it becomes very difficult so yeah so that's the block there I'll put that on github and um, and I'd love any feedback or any suggestions for improvements cheers